me um, now introduce the speakers. I, I think we can I think we can see them um, and hopefully we can hear them. So it's Leila and Mona, and the talk is on enhancing motivation in the language classroom. So over to you. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Today, myself, Mona Sadi, and my colleague, Laila Kamel, we're both language instructors at the American University in Cairo, are going to share with you this presentation on enhancing motivation, which is actually a very, um, I think, common problem that most teachers face in the classroom nowadays, specifically with the move to the online teaching. So as you can see, this is the title, Motivating Unmotivated Learners, Strategies and Techniques. Now, um, as teachers, I'm sure you know, and we have seen this many, many, many times, we have the intrinsically, naturally motivated student. And this student is a pleasure to teach because this student really wants to learn. But we also have the student who's not naturally motivated. And I think it's our job to help these students function in a language classroom or any other classroom, so to speak. So with the move to online, the problem of motivation became even more exacerbated. And in the past few months, millions of students and teachers worldwide made this swift transition to virtual teaching and learning. And teachers had to adapt their tried and tested teaching methods to the current learning scene as <clears throat> schools and universities work to create learning opportunities for students amid this COVID-19 pandemic. Although there is a steep learning curve to master interactive teaching and learning, all teachers luckily can access the most impactful instructional skills. In several ways, teaching in an online setting is very, very much like teaching in a conventional classroom. Both need teachers to develop relationships with students, they give regular and meaningful feedback. Both help learners manage their time well and know how to step in and provide extra support when the student needs it. Nevertheless, this can be very challenging in an online environment and it entails a different approach since teachers are cruising unprecedented set of challenges. And um, it is becoming the new normal, we have to admit that. So we need to be prepared. So there are strategies and techniques that my colleague Laila and myself will share with you today. And I will start with five keys to effective teaching. This applies to online teaching and class face-to-face -face teaching as well, but even more to the online teaching. Number one communicate frequently. You should regularly communicate with each student in an online environment to make them feel they are a member of a learning community. And this communication should start at the very day one, <clears throat> beginning of the semester or beginning of the academic year or the term, whatever we call it, but start at the very, very beginning. Teachers should establish clear expectations and get to know their students. Getting to know individual students and building relationships with them can be challenging when it's face to face, let alone when it's online, it can be more challenging. So we as teachers, we have to take an extra step to make this happen. Teachers should develop the relationships with students by establishing multidimensional communication like they do, like we all do in a face to face class in, um, environment. So besides monitoring content and skills, you should see how the students are doing, ask about their interest, build bridges with your students. Frequent, frequent communication is crucial to ensure that students have the support they need to be successful. So point number one, communicate frequently. Two, in this communication, you have to be very, very careful when you choose your words. So choose words carefully. Your ability to maintain relationship in an online, uh, uh, online classroom can be very challenging because the tone, the intonation, the, bit, the uh, pitch, the gestures, 
maybe they don't see them. So they, this can lead to a different message and can lead to a lot of misunderstandings. So teachers and students do not have the immediate feedback of the visual signs as in a face-to-face -face classroom. And therefore they have to ensure, the teachers should ensure that their words are not misinterpreted. You should know that the words you use can have a massive impact on students, especially in an online environment with a tone tone is very difficult to read. Online communication should be very clear. One way to do this is to be to use a consistent format for all messages, like always begin with a greeting, state your message plainly and carefully, and then end with a closing. Employ this for every communication. You might think it's a simple reply to a question, but to a student, it might seem ambig ambiguous or uh, abrupt. So we want to avoid this just to use a standard way of um, replying to their messages. Okay, one other very important thing, avoid sarcasm or any other language that can be understood. In the class, when you're face-to-face, -face, it can be okay, can be funny, but online it can lead to humongous problems. Because as I said before, the, the visuals are not there. So it can be really misinterpreted. And always utilize what is called asset-based language. And this focuses on strengths, okay, and not the weaknesses. So if a student is falling behind in his or her work, if, and a teacher is using asset-based language, you will say something like, it looks like you completed three or five assignments on time last week, which is the positive thing. I'm wondering how we can work together to get even more assignments in on time this week. You will not say something like you don't complete your work on time or you're lagging behind or what's wrong with you, okay? Just use asset-based language, highlight the positives. And this makes a big difference. All right, so language concentrating on success while avoiding the negatives helps students feel their teacher is approachable. Number three is give students structure. Online learner, learning has a lot of flexibility than conventional classroom setting, which is a plus. But students can get lost when there's no structure. So they need structure to ensure success. What happens when they have all the time in the world? What happens when we're so flexible? They can easily mismanage their time and consequently lag behind. Online instructors involved in class discussions throughout the week encourage students to keep up with their assignments and provide just enough structure to keep the students on track. Create a plan, provide the students with a checklist or, or, of, uh, or a calendar with the target date, dates for students who need extra help with time management, and that is useful. It will keep them on a successful, successful path. So it's very important to ensure there is a structure. Of course, there's flexibility within the structure, but there is this framework. And very important, when you notice something, be quick to offer support. Don't just let the student suffer on his own or on her own. Just see the signs and do something. So when you don't see the student in first person, it's imperative that you notice the signs. They might be struggling and act promptly to help them to succeed. And some may not. So it's your, uh, your responsibility as a teacher to see the signs, okay? And what happens when you see the signs? Still have to do something about it. An online teacher can partner with an adult invested in the student's success. This can be the school-based counselor or a parent that would help monitor the student progress. That's especially for younger students. If students are struggling, you should immediately reach out to the student within, of course, the private student-teacher communication, and teachers should also involve maybe a trusted adult. If a student is not attending or not participating or not submitting assignments, you should take immediate action. You should support, you should work to support that student as soon as the problem is detected. We want to deflate the problem and not exacerbate it. And that is point five, and it's very important. It's not the last on the list. It's actually maybe the most important thing because 
things happen, things outside our hands. So and things outside our students' hands. Students come to class, be it online or face-to-face. -face. We see them as students, but every one of them is carrying a baggage. There's a life behind every student and there's so many things happening in, in their life that may affect them. So there are different factors. So we as teachers, we have to be very flexible. Factors that hinder students from, from completing their work usually occur in any course environment. The teacher needs to be flexible, whether they are teaching online or in a traditional classroom. However, online teaching has additional challenges. For example, one example is when a course includes students from different geographic areas, what's happening in one location may be very different from what's happening in another location. One event happening here, another event happening there, okay? And this one event may affect like power cut, for instance, loss of internet uh, connectivity may happen to one student, but not the other. So we have to be very aware of that. While many students globally are affected by the pandemic, they differ, the experience differ from one. So how do they take it? How do they take it? The effect of this pandemic on them is different because we are different. Everyone is different. So it differs from one student to the other based on their parent involvement and the support of the parents, social and emo emotional wellness, of course, internet connectivity, computer access, and of course, learning preferences. And therefore, a little flexibility will help students be successful and go a long way in an online classroom. Now, Laila, my colleague is going to talk about the disadvantages of online learning but also the advantages because yes, everything has a silver lining. So Laila, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, let's start with the disadvantages and go on to the good sides of positive sides of online learning. Now preparation time is very uh, long because you have to prepare things in to make sure that the students understand it without seeing you personally. So it takes a long time. You have to have everything on your slides or on your um, uh, Zoom. Uh, time management is also very important because things can run away with you. You've got, um, you're there 24 seven for the students and they can call you any time of day or night, you know, according to them, everything is accessible, uh, is possible. So uh, you have to have certain times fixed for meeting the students, certain times fixed for conferences, and you have to be very, very careful to stick to that. Uh, of course, a sense of isolation is one of the basic problems with online learning because students uh, do not feel that they are together. They feel that they are part of a machine, actually part of a picture, part of a, uh, a not really part of an, a, not really an individual in a group socializing. And uh, this leads to lack of motivation. Feedback should not be limited, but uh, you should try a little bit harder to give them feedback. You should maybe meet them more uh, on Zoom or on, um, uh, you know, online and uh, make sure that they do understand what you are saying because the danger with online teaching is that students may just, you know, focus off and you don't realize it just as if you're in a classroom. So you have to be very, very careful. Limited feedback, not too much, but you have to give the feedback. You have to make sure they are there with you. Uh, the... Uh, Communication, of course, is a problem. Assessment is a very, very big problem and it's related to cheating. It's very, very easy to cheat online, of course, and the internet is all theirs. And there are several ways of avoiding that, but it still is a problem. Uh, student availability and attendance, that was a big problem that faced me because they just switch on their Zoom uh, meeting and they switch off their camera, switch off their mic and you don't know what they're doing. Might as well go to sleep. So uh, best thing is to have them switch on their cameras, whatever happens. Uh, Self-discipline, again, they have to make sure they are there. They have to make sure they're attentive. And um, I'll answer all the questions at the end. Okay, uh, there's the human element that's lacking. You know, once I had in a classroom a student asking, uh, it was a little question we were discussing, could technology replace teachers or not? And here technology is partly replacing teachers, I think, but the students were all against it, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. And uh, they thought that no, technology cannot do for the human element. 
human beings are much more important. You have to see them in person. And this makes a big difference, a big difference in rapport with the students. Of course, technology problems are something that you have to deal with and that's power cuts, internet problems, connections. Um, that's another problem facing online, which you wouldn't find in a normal classroom. Mona, please, Mona, please. Okay, the advantages, you have greater flexibility. You have greater time on your hands because, and accessibility, they're related together because you can see the students, uh, sometimes they're very busy or they've got a lot of uh, lectures in the morning. So you can see them in the afternoon, even if you're not in the same institution, even if they're at home and you're at home. So of course it's easily accessible, time saving, if you've got to go long ways to reach your institution, and this is the case with me actually, so it saves commuting and it does play a big role in, in saving time. Uh, of course, with COVID-19, it's safer. Uh, possibility of reviewing recorded lectures, that's another advantage because uh, mostly on Zoom, uh, people record lectures, I've noticed. In classroom, it doesn't happen as often really. It's much more of a hassle than online. Uh, it's less intimidating. Some students don't like to um, don't like to speak in front of others, and in uh, in Zoom they are more protected by the screen, if you like, and they are more. You can put them in breakout rooms where they work in pairs or in groups of three only, so they don't have to face the whole classroom. So they are more comfortable. Some of them, not all of them. Uh, attendance is much better because they don't have to come all the way at a specific time. They just click on their uh, their computers. Uh, they may have just woken up and, you know, they run to the computer and, and start their, their lesson. Uh, it's easier for them to attend. Instructor availability, of course, and this is the dangerous part I was speaking about. You must not be available all the time. You must make sure to have certain specific times when you are available. Promotes lifelong learning. I think that online learning and the use of the internet and the use of Commute, um, of communicating with people who are not there beside you uh, can lead to a kind of um, ease in communicating with other people anywhere in the world. So that even if you are doing some research or you've got, uh, you can email people more easily. You get the habit of communicating with people who are not close to you. And I think that this is essential nowadays in, in anything, in any field of life actually. And this is related, of course, to connecting the students to the global village. Uh, the world is becoming very, very small. Everyone can con contact everyone else. And this gives you so many possibilities um, with research, with any other aspect of life. So that's very, very important. I think online learning has promoted this and it has increased this kind of, of ease and comfort in, in um, communicating anywhere with anyone. Yes, Mona, please. All right. Now, among the very, very uh, interesting ways to motivate students, I found in my classroom, you can do this, you can ask questions about any topic, but you know, philosophy is such a wide topic that you can use. And when you've got students a little bit, you know, getting bored, or you want to introduce some change in the classroom, you want to generate discussion, which they will all be interested in, I'm sure, because anyone can speak about that, even without reading previously or without having any specific background. You've got questions like, what is the nature of the universe? Where do we come from? Where does the universe come from? Of course, maybe religion is a bit sensitive, so I wouldn't go to religion with certain in certain cases, but, I would skip question number two in certain cases, but it's up to you, of course. However, if you, if you think of what's the place of man in the universe, okay? What is reality? What is the mind? What is thought? And again, good and evil are very, very interesting topics to speak about. Are we born evil? Are we born good? Do people change? Is it possible to separate good from evil? And then you can go on to, if they've studied any works or they have read any articles about that, you can refer to that and it generates incredible discussion. All the students are involved in the discussion and it's really, really a very lucrative uh, um, way of, of getting students to talk, you know? They all have something to say there. Okay. Yes, Mona, please. Okay. Uh, so, Questions which are interesting, questions which involve all kinds of students, questions which will sort of force them 
to participate in classroom are very important. They should be related, of course, to current issues. They should be related to uh, things that they understand, things that they can speak about. You should not speak about things that they are not aware of. It You will lose them. Okay, one way of doing that, I was thinking of short documentaries, and this can be used in any area. Uh, here, I'm, I, I use it with the environment, actually, uh, thinking of the current problems uh, that we are facing nowadays. And I think that everyone on earth is affected by pollution, by problems with environment, depletion of resources. These are very, very common things that everyone can speak about and everyone is aware of water shortage, you know, all that kind of thing. Uh, the thing I want to tell you, however, is that you have to be sure to follow this by uh, questions and assignment, something that have to do. Because if you, you just tell students, you will watch a documentary and then go home and that's it, they will not pay attention to the documentary. It has to be something that they will answer questions to. And this was an example of a documentary. It starts by some uh, quotations. And you can also speak about the quotations if you like uh, to, the, uh, to the students. You can discuss the quotations and discuss the, for instance, that was Vandana Shiva. If you want, you can give them an assignment of, a, a very short thing. They can look it up in the internet and find out who is this person who said this, um, uh, this little quotation. Uh, and there are many quotations like that that you can work with and which will involve them. You can put them in breakout rooms, you can divide them into groups in the class, whatever you want. Okay, now this is the documentary about nature as it was. It was beautiful, it was perfect, it was uh, clean, you see, there were trees and there were beautiful mountains and beautiful places, you see. The sea was beautiful and the beaches. Okay, so this was the beginning, all right? This was some time ago. And eventually and gradually, we are facing a problem nowadays. Where is the problem? That, that is the problem. Depletion of resources, introduction of, introduction of man-made, uh, uh, um, um, things in the environment. Man is intruding in the environment, you see. Man is trying to play around with the environment. Man is trying to introduce cars, to introduce pollution, to introduce, to cut down trees, uh, big cities, uh, whatever, you know, and, and resources are being depleted, resources are being spoiled, pollution. Look at that picture. Look at these pictures and the, it's a very luxurious yacht, very nice places. But look at what they're doing to nature, you see? Look at the fumes, look at the factories. They are really spoiling nature. The crowds, overpopulation, people are all sticking into one area, you see? And this is what's happening nowadays. Okay, Mona, thank you. You can stop the video, please. That, of course, again, is a very pitiful sight. Very, very pitiful sight. Okay, so this is what you get, and that's another site, you know. So here, you can use documentaries very, very nicely so that the students can really generate ideas. And you can divide them into groups. You can tell them to write something on a Google Doc, maybe. And then you can show that Google Doc, they can share it in the group, and then they can share it with you. And you can put it on the screen, and you can all uh, discuss whatever this group has has uh, realized because of the document, you see. There are questions you can ask the whole group, the whole class, what messages uh, are conveyed in this documentary. Do you think it's successful? How can you improve it? How Do you think that there's something offensive about it? Uh, what did you like? What didn't you like? Why? Okay. And, uh, and then, of course, you can discuss some of the problems of industry, the problems of technology, problems of modern life, and the students can write something about it. They don't just need to speak about it. You can develop it into a composition. You can develop it into a reflection paper. You can develop it into a, if you've got something, an article, they can summarize the article related to this documentary. So you can really build a whole big um, um, lesson including reading, writing, speaking, and listening. You see, they can give a short presentation about it. You can do so much with it. Okay, and these are tips for the teacher. Um, you know, with, with online learning, it's very nice to have a resource person or shadow. And this is a kind of, um, uh, if, if a teacher is familiar with this way of teaching and then she can have another teacher is not very familiar or he can have another teacher is not very familiar and this other teacher will sort of shadow what can be done. 
um, plan for diversity, you have to vary in content. I mean, this was about the environment. When you're showing them another documentary, don't show the environment, show something else. Show, um, what can you show? Show something related to sociology or related to anthropology or related to something, psychology, you see? So you can vary. And in this case, they would not be bored. Most important thing to motivate students is avoid boredom at all costs, you see? Mm. So vary. Be a storyteller. Remember the information. Assign stories to students to reflect on an idea or a situation or a video. And sometimes you can even start the story. Um, I haven't tried this, honestly, but I want to do that by uh, starting in class, a group of people, two or three, a pair or three people, they start telling the story and then the, the other group picks up the story from where they stop and the, the next group picks up the story. So they have to all be aware of what's being said in class. They can't just go to sleep, you see, because they are going to continue what is being said. So mm -hmm. this again is an interesting way of, of dealing with, of keeping the students involved in class. Okay. Uh, regularly update the course content, of course, current news and new trends. You must not stick to all things. You must always be aware of what's happening. Uh, last year, it was the pandemic, but I think this has gone out of fashion now because it's still there, but you know, it has been so, so overused. I'm not using it any longer this year. Uh, you clarify goals, they've got to be very careful. They, they have to know what they're going to do. There's a composition coming after that, tell them. There's a summary, tell them. There's a answer, um, comprehension question and answer session, tell them. They have to be very clear, okay? And if you've got a schedule and they're aware of what you're doing, uh, say during the whole week, they'll be ready for it. Provide timely and useful feedback, of course, emails, conferencing, you have so many different ways of giving feedback. Uh, provide active learning opportunities, uh, interactive classroom activities, as I said, projects. Uh, you know, they can start a project. I haven't tried this, but I, I would love them to start a website, you know, and at the end of the semester, show you what they've done. I haven't done that yet. So I cannot talk a lot about that, maybe in another, uh, another time. Uh, make learning social. Breakout rooms or group work in class. I love groups of three because they are, it's not too big, it's not too small. Pair work is a bit limited, but you know, sometimes with the, with our distancing nowadays in the classroom, uh, three groups of three is very, very hard. So I often use pair, pairs in, in, in work, but groups of three is the best. Uh, small group activities, of course, as I said, limited groups and three is nice. You synthesize at the end of the class, you remind the students of what the lesson was about. You sort of give a very small summary of the lesson because this short sort of focuses what you have done, puts more focus on what, and they know what they should know at the end of the lesson. Okay, thank you. Practice, of course. <laughs> I don't need to speak about practice. It's such a common thing. All right. Now I've got something called inquiry-based learning. This enhances learning experiences. Uh, it, uh, it is skills needed for all areas. Again, I always like to target the four skills. Uh, fosters curiosity in students and deepens their understanding of the topic and allows them to take ownership of their learning. As I said, again, practicing uh, um, autonomous learning and lifelong learning and all that kind of thing. It increases engagement with the material and with each other, and is very, very successful for online learning if you're interested in online learning. Okay, so this is the inquiry-based method, and it is divided into four parts. First part is interaction. And here, the student is uh, engaging. You're just giving them something interesting. You are giving them, you're using the media, maybe you're giving them, as I said, maybe a documentary, maybe something like that. And they are going to uh, uh, deal with that. Uh, they have the opportunity for inquiring about it. And here they are flexible. They are thinking about what they're doing. Uh, they're open-minded and they're, they're, they will accept all the different ideas. And they've got clarification. Clarification, summarizing or categorizing the data that they have got. They got the data at the beginning, they're summarizing it. Their focus is increasing a little bit. They're getting more focused, more understanding. And maybe the teacher can help to give support or to clarify certain points or to answer certain questions that are confusing to them. And then again, this is of course, they are groups. They are not the whole class together. And then they start questioning. They start asking questions and wanting to know more about the topic. They're starting to be inquisitive. 
It is they're inquiring and trying to delve deeper. Here, the, uh, the topic is taking form. The uh, different ideas are sort of getting more uh, tangible. And then design, design is the last thing, is designing what they are going to come out with. It is creativity. They are going to, to write an essay, they are going to do a project, they're going to this, whatever they're going to do, uh, discuss it maybe, um, reflect upon it, but they are going to give you the final product, the crea creative thing, the thing they have created out of all this uh, uh, method. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mona. Mona, next please. Yeah, uh, so in creating an inquiry-based classroom, you have to have interesting and often controversial topics because um, you can generate many, many ideas and a lot of discussion on that. You know, <laughs> gender-related areas here in, in, in Egypt, gender-related areas would be very, very, because mm -hmm. they get very enthusiastic about gender differences and things like that. Uh, or, you know, it depends on where you come from. It depends on controversial topics in your own society. Try to find something where, the inter where there, there could be different ideas, you know. Okay, allow students to explore and question, divide them into groups for analysis and discussions. I was telling you they have to work in, uh, in groups and um, each proper student, uh, oh, sorry, ensure uh, proper student placement because you must not put all the strong students and all the weak students together. You may, must make sure that you've got the proper students, uh, we, uh, one weak and two strong ones, you know, that kind of thing, or, or so that they can, they can help each other, not have all, the, all of them working very well and, 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 and a group working very, very badly. Uh, and then they share results and they argue because if it's a controversial issue, you can divide them into for and against or you know, different sides of something. And then there are arguments and there are comments and the class becomes very, very lively because it's really, they get enthusiastic about it and sometimes they continue after class even when they, when they leave class. Um, of course, as I told you, there always has to be a product. You never give an assignment without a product. So here again, I love reflection papers, comps if you want, you know, um, anything that they can write down. Okay, and uh, that's another way of attracting students. Uh, I, I chose this because it's about gender and about racial discrimination. Uh, that's, what, that's an old movie, it was in the 60s, and uh, it's, uh, it was a very nice movie at the time, but nowadays it's becoming obsolete, I guess. However, it shows you uh, um, the conflict between um, colored and white people at that time. Of course, this has changed. And that's why I got an old movie because at that, that was in the 60s. So they, they can imagine what the situation was in the 60s and they com can compare it to the situation today, which is completely different. Can you just show me a little bit of the movie, please? And uh, now this is, I would like to show them uh, short bits of the movie. Heard and, me at once. Well, can you tell me your reaction? How do you feel about it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I was shaken at first. I still am, I suppose. But Matt, they're serious. They mean what they're saying. Both of them. They know what they're doing. No, they may mean what they're saying. I accept that. But they don't know what they're doing. I won't accept that. I'm not intruding. Of course not. John, please, come in. I'd like to have a couple of minutes with the two of you, if I may. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, doctor. Come on in. There's something you both ought to know. I made a decision. Joanna doesn't know about it, and I don't see any reason why she should. What is it, doctor? Joanna thinks she's committed and that our whole future is settled, but there is no real commitment. And up to now, nothing is settled at all. I don't understand that. Joanna said you're going to be married no matter what we might think about it. Well, that's not the case. Unless you two approve, and without any reservations at all, there won't be any marriage. Okay. Oh, why, uh, John? Can you stop, Mona, please? Okay. I think we're running out of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Here, I would show them a little bit of the movie and then I'd ask them, what was the situation? Guess what was happening? Guess what will happen in, after, the, at the end of the movie? Uh, and they would start guessing, idea, guessing things and 
uh, guessing what the situation is and trying to uh, relate to maybe their own lives, maybe relate to their own thoughts. And, uh, and then I go on with the, another part of the movie and I show them how it, uh, it ends and so on. And uh, again, it generates interesting kinds of discussion. Uh, what do you think will happen? And, uh, and then eventually when they know the whole story, it's about they're getting married and they did get married at the end. Uh, you can develop that into a human rights discussion, into a discrimination, different kinds of discrimination, racial, gender, uh, whatever, religious, whatever discrimination. And it can again, generate a lot of ideas. And so movies are interesting to, to break the, the um, monotony. Yes? Mm. All right. Students answer questions in breakout rooms and they share ideas with the rest of the class. This is, uh, of course, this is what, what, uh, what you do with the movie in small groups. Advertisements also is, are very interesting. I don't want to spend much time, but uh, you know, they can, they are so tricky and they show you beautiful things and actually they are terrible things. So you see, this is how they would do the advertisement of a, a cake, for instance. They'd get this cardboard and I don't know, paper, whatever, you know, and then the, the shaving, that's shaving cream, you know. And, and they can, it's interesting because this is sort of, um, again, it, they can speak about it and they can say what they think. Are they going to eat this after? Are they going to believe advertising anymore? What is the uh, job of, or, or what, what does the media, uh, how does the media brainwash uh, viewers? Or, okay, Mona, I think that's enough because you get an idea that um, it's, it can be very interesting and the, the, the documentary is really interesting. And it shows you terrible things about advertisements. And there are things that are funny sometimes and there are things that are unexpected. So you can use advertisements very, very nicely to generate, again, discussion and motivate the students in the classroom. And this is collage. Again, this you're getting pictures or images from different, it can be related to any topic. This is, uh, this was, um, Good and evil, I think, mm. if I remember correctly. And it was, you know, and then they 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 guess at the, the the images. Of course, there's Einstein, there's Hitler, and then there's something from a cartoon character, and then there's the good and evil, the angel and the devil, the Superman, said that, you know. So it's it, it was you could do it with politics, you could do it with science, you could do it with anything you like. And that I think was good and evil. So you're just trying to find uh, good people and not so good people, whatever. Okay, yes. Mona, please, because I'm, I'm, I think I'm running out of time. Yeah. Game variety, uh, you put them into small teams and uh, the, student pose, the students pose uh, questions to the teacher. And, the and here it's the other way, it's reversed, you see, because usually the students are the ones who answer, who ask the teacher and the teacher answers. Now the students are forming questions that they would like to the teacher to respond to. And they can be very, be very imaginative in their questions. So, uh, so this is, again, it sort of motivates them to speak. This is related, of course, to speaking. Shy ones maybe will be able to, um, to get involved somehow. Sequencing events according to their orders. Uh, short class presentations and debates. All these are very, very interesting ways of absorbing students in class. Yes, Mona, I'm running out of time. That's it, that's it, yeah. Okay, so Thanks. basically what we try to do here today with you is share with you some of our, what we tried in the classroom that worked in enhancing motivation, specifically in an online class, but we also use the same strategies and techniques in uh, a face-to-face -face class. Um, the problem was when we started teaching online, many thought it, it will be easier or less time consuming, but the fact is that it requires just as much time to conduct an online class as conducting uh, the preparation, the work you put into it is exactly the same. And it brings unique challenges, but maybe incorporating the strategies and techniques and the activities that we shared with you today, beside a sense of humor and flexibility, you can make the online class courses very successful for you and your students. And someone once said, e-learning doesn't just happen. It requires careful planning and implementation. And that's very true. And like what Kami Bean said, people expect to be bored by e-learning. Let's show them it doesn't have to be like that. These are our references. And thank you so very much. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you both very, very much. I, I think people might have to watch this again next week because it was packed with ideas. I think I did, I did say to the speakers to try and give some examples of what people can do as well as, you know, an informative talk. I think that more than delivered with that. So um, that, that's, that's great. Lots of great comments coming through. 
a really nice thing is that people have been asking questions in the chat and other other people have been answering those questions and suggesting things you probably yeah. didn't see that um but that's really good that everybody's sort of supporting it and helping each other um just I've scribbled down a few questions let me just try and pick out some uh here so there was one um from fernando i think uh yes uh, we need to remember that before the pandemic we gave classes to groups of 15 plus students um, when giving online classes, teachers tend to do more teacher-centred classes. Um, what can we do to make them more student-centred? I think you mm -hmm. did give some examples in there, but, uh, you know, autonomous working and, and, and how, how, how do you get students to sort of work independently on their own without being stimulated every second? Go, Go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No. Okay, uh, uh, you can give them, uh, they have to have uh, homework. They have to have something to work on and to give you, they have to be graded. And uh, this is the, the thing that makes them work. And this is the best way to make sure that they do give in the work. Mm -hmm. um, they have to write something about what they have done in class. Yeah. Maybe one And of them. course the Google Doc thing is there, yeah. Yeah, and you can make them within the session work together on a Google Doc and you see exactly who's doing what, so everyone is involved and it's documented. So they cannot say, well, I lost my homework. I do. It's there, they're doing it on a Google Doc right in front of you. That, that leads to another question is how do you track, how do you know students are working when they're online, if the screen's off or, you know, for the homework, how, how do you track that? How do you monitor it? They usually put, oh. give their homework on turn it in and you have the homework. So uh, you either have the assignment or they lose the marks. Uh -huh. what, about so, what about socialization? Um, I think it's a quite a good quote from Dr. Um, this, this, is, this is tricky online, you know, socialization. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> quite, uh, let me read this out because it's quite nice actually. It says, how, how can we add socializing, um, a socializing touch to, to the online teaching? Online teaching Absolutely. is like putting perfume on paper flowers. They <laughs> smell nice, but they're not real. Uh, online teaching is never real because it's not there, because you are not there. It's a machine after all. But putting them into breakout rooms uh, and putting maybe the same groups uh, several times together uh, leads them to be friends because inevitably they've got some time to discuss things together, to speak about their own personal lives. And it's not that they, they finish right on time and they come back right on time. They do socialize a little bit. And some of my students last semester uh, got to be friends by seeing each other on Zoom and by working on groups and Zoom. So it is artificial maybe, but it is a kind of socialization. Is One I can add maybe. Yeah, yeah I I think, I, I, go on. No, no, I'm just saying that's it. Breakout rooms make a big, big difference because you're out and they're together and it's their time to, to talk maybe about things that maybe are not related to what we're doing in the classroom. But I mean, that's the point. We want them to become engaged and make friends. And many of my students last semester, as Lila said, they uh, they became friends and they started meeting uh, socially outside outside the academic context. Although they were not together on the same campus because we we're completely uh, online last semester. I, I have a little thing to add. You know, even when they are face to face, they create WhatsApp groups. And WhatsApp groups are very, very helpful for them to get to know each other. They send each other little messages and little notes. And this is a very good way of socializing, I think. Excellent, mm. thank you. It, yeah, there was a lot on um, on the well-being part. I like the comments at the beginning about, um, just trying to find it here, um, you know, behind there's a life behind every student, I think. Um, and there was, a, there was just a comment Definitely, from- yeah. Yeah, there was a comment from uh, Mohammed about online teaching could make, you feel that students are just robots, just just there without any human interaction, because that's what we we've lost. Luckily, people are yes. moving back into the classrooms now, but um, we definitely have lost that. I mean, everybody's had to do this. You know, we've had to homeschool my children, and and they're desperate to to see people. Mm. But um, at, at least this way, these days, we have the cameras and we can have some sort of socialization and motivation and well being which I think is really important. If you're spotting the signs of somebody struggling, um, it's time to take action. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, yeah. Well, there's another area actually I'll just go into, which is about what about motivation for the teachers? Because we've focused a lot on the students and the teachers have got to, I, I remember when I was teaching a few years ago, many years ago, 
and whatever was happening in your life, you, you had to be an actor. You had to come in with a smile and you had to be positive. But the teachers are also yeah, feeling it yes. too. Teach you very any? much. Yeah, they can get all, yes, of course, on our health and emotional health, and, yeah, of course. But I mean, you always find that you're the teacher and you're the one who should hold your act together, pull yourself together because you're there too. I hope one day we're, we don't collapse. <laughs> but you know, we love what we're doing. <laughs> we love what we're doing. We really love what we're doing. So this is what fuels us. Yeah. Okay. And um, uh, of course, you should temper yourself and give yourself some me time from time to time. Yeah. Maybe go to. But you know uh, what is really or or you know um, spa or give yourself I don't know what treat yourself do some yeah to break the routine. But but what really gives you so much satisfaction is that when you meet one of your students who has finished university and is working in whatever area, and then he comes and says hello in the street if he meets you know, in the store and and it's so 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 gratifying really and yeah. this keeps you going on really it is going on. Yeah, I always go with the motto that teachers touch lives forever. Yeah. And that's just, true. Yeah. 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 There's the, the opposite just there, actually, a, a comment from Paulina that says the isolation has been horrendous. The students have kept me alive. So you can, you know, it's not only one way positivity, it's, it's positivity yeah. coming back. Because we've all, we've all been in classes and, and we know that, you know, so a lot of the students are just lovely and great and you do feel happy to to be there and teach that's yes. why you do it yeah exactly yeah fantastic we do have a talk actually link it somebody else has written about mental health the next talk in the series is um uh, it's at uk time uh, four o'clock um but it's all about well-being just to plug that that talk yes. that's coming up. so if you're interested in that in that area um there's a there's a talk on that coming up later today Excellent. um yeah, just a question about the, the breakout groups. Somebody asked uh, a question about what platform could they use to, to, to get their bigger groups into smaller groups. I think they were talking about breakout rooms. Yeah, we use Zoom. Zoom is our platform. Yeah. And somebody else mentioned Telegram. I don't know if you've heard of that. I think there's Telegram, but that's something like WhatsApp. I'm not sure. Right. Is it? Yeah. It's right. OK. I think people have written comments. I, I, there's so many. There's over 100 comments so I haven't somebody might have responded to that and, and suggested them um, something else but that, that's great thanks everybody there um how much time we go we still got plenty of time um how do you deal with kinesthetic students basically students that like to move around and wriggle around I, I think I'm like that I, I have to be doing something I have to be moving um because sitting in front of a screen uh, we, we've been here for 50 minutes and um I think it's about the maximum time for me. I, you know, anything after this, I start to get a bit. So what, what would you do in terms of movement, perhaps, for, for activities? Hmm, that's interesting. Well, you I mean, know, when you're in class, they just move, right? Hmm. I would always give a break after three quarters of an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah. A break is, is, is very important. A cup of coffee important. or something. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, don't, don't try and, uh, for anybody, I was going to say for younger people, but for, even for older people, don't, don't try and, uh, and go for too long in one big oh, session. The, yeah. The, 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 yeah, you can't, concentrating on a screen is, is, is very difficult. For, for you can't hold their time. attention for more than that. You'll just lose them. Yeah. yeah and of exactly. course, use a variety of activities within the 45 minutes, for instance, so yeah. that you're, you're keeping them there and then give the break. It's yeah. not like a um, monotonous lecturing thing for one hour, for instance, yeah. Sure. But what, what, what are the activities, just for, this is my question, actually, what are the activities that you feel have worked the best um, while you've been teaching your students to, for the motivative sort of part? I mean, I was watching the video there, and videos, for me, are always good, because I was really watching that, and I was interested in that. But what kind of activities do you feel have worked the best? You know what I think also is um, a, a good thing is uh, debates where they really get enthusiastic. The point is choosing topic. This is the most important thing. You know, choice of topic is the basic thing because this is what you have to interest the students. They have to be interested in what they are uh, dealing with. Uh, and if you choose the proper topic, you can have again. Um, if you've got, I had sometimes multiple choice um, crossword puzzles for vocabulary. 
And they really enjoyed the crossword puzzles and the one who finished, it was in class actually. And the first one who finished got a little prize, a little, you know, um, sweet or whatever. And they were very, very enthusiastic. Uh, um, so you can have debates, crossword puzzles, you know, activities where they, uh, people sometimes use games like a hoot or whatever again, but that's, that's short. It doesn't take a, a really very long time. Mm. So mm. kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, excellent. Um, just scrolling through the questions, sorry, while you, while you were talking there. Um, what, what about, there was a couple of questions about sort of ch cheating online and when you're doing tests and things. How, 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 do you, yeah. how do you monitor that? How do you cope with that? Well, actually, we ask them to submit everything on Turnitin. And Turnitin catches if there's plagiarism, of course. However, you would never know if someone else did it for them. I mean, if they're copying from a source on the internet, it would show. But sometimes we as teachers would know, for instance, that this is definitely not the student's work. So maybe someone helped, I don't know. So we there's this respondents monitor that locks up the screen so they cannot um, access anything. It's very difficult. I mean, it's very difficult. And um, this is one of the things that make us very happy going face to face, having them have the exam just in front of us because some students cheat. We, I think they, they um, sorry, I was just saying that we at AUC we value academic integrity to um, the highest level. We give the modules about the um, uh, repercussions that can occur if they cheat. We have every exam paper has a red part at the bottom which says that you should abide by the academic integrity rules, and if there's any violation, this will. Um, uh, incur, incur um, horrible consequences that can reach dismissal maybe from university and despite that yeah. some of them still do yeah I mean when you're when you're older and wiser you say you're only cheating yourself but when you're younger you, you don't you just want to huh. get the best answers but yeah, that's great. yeah. so it's um, difficult yeah, to monitor in an online situation yeah yeah <coughs> Mm. I mean, if, if anybody else has really wanted... looking at the chat box here, yeah, if anybody else has any suggestions or activities, please, please feel free to, to put yeah, them I, I believe that the students are very, very uh, <clears throat> clever in cheating, not only online, actually, <laughs> even in class. Yeah, so, and globally, it's globally. Yeah. It's a, yeah. <laughs> it is a big uh -huh. problem, but I don't know. We try our best. <laughs> do you, do you, um, there's a comment on, on socializing, um, and I think it was connected to a slide that you made a, a quote, something about connecting students to a global village. But um, do, do, you ever, do you ever, instead of giving students activity after activity after activity, do you, do you give them time to socialize? Like if they were in the building, together in the building, because they, they wouldn't have got that, would they? They wouldn't have that time. Do, do you allow time for, for the socialization or just to let them, let them be for a while? Or? They do have clubs at university and they meet there. And uh, socialization also happens when you give them group work, a project, say, or a presentation. Sometimes they get, we give them presentations in groups of three. So the three are supposed to give this presentation. Um, uh, two we, we give them two weeks or 10 days for that. And believe me, they meet and they socialize and they meet in coffee shops or they meet in whatever. Mm -hmm. And, they, and they, they, they get to know each other very, very well by means of, um, you know, just working together. So uh, yeah, they do socialize, of course. You can't, they don't socialize. In class, they can socialize even in Zoom rooms when they've got a little time, some students finish before the others. Mm -hmm. And even, in, you know, when they're working in groups, they're working in pairs, they do have time to socialize after all, but it's minimal because you can't spend a lot, a lot of class time socializing. But they do have projects and they do have presentations in groups and there they do socialize, yes. Yeah. And you know, we, we, we see them four times a week. So that's a very long time and each time it's three hours. So we see yeah. them for a very, very long time. And uh, I think that they make friends during that first year, the first year for the freshman students. Um, so they make friends in this period, in this semester, more than any other time they spend at AUC, you see, because they see each other every, almost every day for three hours. 
Yeah. And they've got their breaks at the same time. It's never one shot. Of course, we do give them a break in the three hours, during the three hours. And so they've got a lot. Oh, they do make friends and the WhatsApp group. And I noticed that they do. I meet them two or three years later and they tell me, ah, oh, you've seen whatever, whoever, because we're great friends now and you see them all the time and whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, they do socialize. Absolutely. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Final, uh, final area. Um... Final question. I think we've only got a couple more minutes. Um, and I'm sure these are topics that people are desperate to sort of unmute themselves. Unfortunately, people can't join in the conversation. I'm, I'm sure it'd be fantastic if they could. But um, now people are moving back into the classroom. We focused a lot on online uh, ways to motivate students. C can most of these ideas be, be taken back into the classroom? And, and if so, are there new activities that you've discovered that you think, well, actually, this would, would work very well face to face? Everything, everything can work very well. Yes, they can all work face to face or online. Uh, we've tried to choose things which can which can be applicable in any situation. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's also a few people asking about the hybrid. You know, they've got some students online, some students at home. Yes. Um, and 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 have you had that situation as well? Or no, or we're not. No. No, okay. Yeah, I know that that's um, that's a, a, an area that people were were struggling yes. with, and that's understandable. Um, and you know, do you adapt the activity for, for in a different way to cater for those people? I think in our ask me anything yesterday, somebody said no, don't don't make it diff uh, difficult or different. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's great. So all these activities here, and people can look back over and watch this again next week when we.